Well, as always, I say Mondays are mostly the most boring day starting off the week. But however, as always here on DWZ, we keep your Mondays very entertaining for all of you. So today we're going to be focusing more only on Japanese wrestling. So if you're fans of that, well, this is the channel just for you. So today we're going to be reviewing Sendai Girls in Cork and Hall that took place back on the 5th of November. Now, as you may or may not have been aware, there was a show that just recently came out on the 11th, but I haven't seen that just yet. But this one features, of course, Saray in the mid, Saray, or as Saray, facing off against Mika Iwawada in a non-title match. And there's other several matches that took place. We even have, of course, All Japan Pro Wrestling with the commencement of day one of both Real World Tag League and Junior Battle of Glory. So we're going to see who's going to participate and how far it's going to go. And then we cap it up with some Pro Wrestling Noah with Monday Magic Episode 3 that took place recently. And then, of course, we have some news updates to tell what's been going on in the world of pro wrestling, such as what events the promotions are throwing out, who's booked, what, uh, what matches are set, any wrestlers that either been signed or departed from the promotions, any injured, en injured wrestlers, the whole enchilada. So, let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Lead It Wrestle Zone, all things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay right here. So if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is a channel where we do a lot of reviews on pro wrestling, not only here in the United States, but also in Japan. Mexico, Canada, Europe, the UK, anywhere in the world where wrestling is not as big, but it is continue to grow. We also do discussion videos, talk about the wrestlers themselves, promotions, titles, whatever we can get our hands on. We also do more news updates if I'm unable to put it on this episode, and also real-time updates what's been going on and various other cool things. So if you like what you see, please subscribe to us so click on that subscribe button you'll be getting a lot of daily reviews on this channel but if you also like this episode please give us a like on the like button or a nice comment down below now let's begin with of course with yoshi promotion sendai girls uh this one was in corken hall on the 5th of november now i haven't seen the 11th that was in sapporo so i don't know if i'll be able to see it but only time will tell but this one has very exciting. Now, as you know, the founder and and owner, Mako Satomura, does her thing, does a little promo and all this and that. So, it, I don't know exactly what she said, but she did her thing. Now, our first match begins with um, Yurika Oka taking on Miu Momono from Marvelous. I thought this match was pretty good. I mean, very decent. But, of course, you know, um, I have seen Yurika... Very, very strong many times. I mean, she was the um, Sendai Girls Junior Heavyweight Champion. But she's facing someone who's been the top champion in another promotion. We're talking about Mio Momono. But it was Mio Momono who was able to um, apply a very interesting victory roll onto her to pick up the win. A huge disappointing loss by Oka. But um, I'm sure she'll uh, learn from this and hopefully pick up a good win. Next up, we got the Ev the Evo Girls, or should I say the Evolution Girls, um, Chi-Chi and Zones. They take on uh, these new girls named Yuna and Rhea Marimori. Now, I don't know much about them, but uh, judging from what I can see be between those two, with Yuna and Ma um, Marumori, uh, they seem to be like the new girls in, in, in the promotion. 
I thought this would be a much simpler match for Chi Chi and Zones due to the fact they only have almost a year and a half or plus as wrestlers, but um, they did pretty well, not to mention. Uh, it was Zones that picked up the win with an elbow drop, and just like that, she won. <sighs> Excuse me. Now, next up, this one's a very fun, entertaining match. We have Sakura <coughs> Sakura Iroda. She takes on Miyuki Takase. Now, this match ended in nine seconds when, of course, um, Sakura picked up the win by pinning uh, Takase. Now, Takase was not too satisfied with the idea of how this match ended. However, she demanded a restart which, of course, it did, but however, the same result went to um, Sakura Iroda to pick up another win with another pinfall. But this time, it was less than a minute. However, um, of course, once again, Takase demanded for a second restart. Now, this one went a little bit more longer than usual, like maybe over five, six minutes, I think. But it was Miyuki Takase who picked up the win when she... As soon as she got her little butthole, you know, go with this way, Sakura, apparently, uh, me, uh, Takase actually picked up the win by pitting her, apparently, a move that she normally would do herself, but that's how it ends. Now, our next match, <sighs> we have Lena Cross teaming up with Lady Destroyer Hiroyo Matsumoto. They take on Nanami and... Ryu Mizunami. I thought there was going to be some good mat, uh, good moments due to, of course, you got Mizunami and Matsumoto. They're both powerhouses in their disrespected right. But in the end of this match, it was Lena Cross with the pinfall onto Nanami to pick up the win. Uh, Manami, and that's pretty well. Next up, we got the other girls from Marvelous Riko Kawahara and Takumi Iroha. They take on, of course, the tag team champions in a non-title match. Um, team 200 kilogram, you and Chihiro Hashimoto. Uh, you probably would have assumed there's going to be a lot of power coming from Team 200 kilogram, which, of course, it's always been the case. But Ryu Kawahara, who is um, was able to hold her own as long as possible, but however, that wasn't enough until Hashimoto applied a power bomb. And it was over right from there. So team 200 kilogram picked up the win. Now. Uh, <sighs> our next match. Is a hardcore match. We have of course. Uh, Dash. Um, Dash. She, um, Shizako. Taking on the, leg the legend herself. Aja Kong. Now you know there was going to be a lot of toys. Being around tables. Ladders and all that. I mean. How are you going to put away someone like Aja Kong? Well, you don't. Unless Aja Kong puts you away first. But it only took a back fist to put Dash down and pick up the win. Now, our next match, as I mentioned before, we have, of course, a non-title match. Now, these two ladies are champions. Uh, Suri is the current Beyond the Sea champion from Seedling. And then, of course, Mik um, Iwata is the current Sendai Girls World Champion. So none of them put their titles on the line. So it was just a straight up non-title match. Which was pretty good. Pretty cl uh, classic. But in the end it was a German suplex. By Suri to pick up the win. So I thought it was really fun. However Suri put up a promo. I don't know what she said. However she had some unfinished business. With someone who's from Sendai Girls. And we're talking about Hashimoto. Those who don't remember or don't know, it was Suri who had her return match against Hashimoto uh, in her self-produced show, Suriism. So I've already seen it, but I haven't reviewed it for all of you. I will do that on a special episode when the time comes. But we'll see how that plays out. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it right now with Sunday Girls. I believe it's time for All Japan Pro Wrestling. Okay, 
we have All Japan Pro Wrestling. They have two tournaments taking place, and it just started just recently on the 12th of November in Cork and Hall. Uh, one tournament's called the Junior Battle of Glory, which is, I believe, a competition, f- a tournament for actual junior heavyweight competitors. Um, but yeah, I think the idea of whoever wins gets a shot of the of the junior heavyweight title. However, uh, just a note on this one: this one does not have uh, blocks. What we have seen, like with New Japan and certain promotions in Japan, this one they just straight up have. The winners gathering by points and that's it. No block, no divisions of blocks or anything. Um, also, we commence also with Real World Tag League. Another opportunity for tag team champions. So there's a lot of teams taking place. But uh, we'll see what happens. So let's begin with, of course, it starts out with the ceremonies from both sides. I thought it was fantastic. But let's go with the first match. Um, the first one is from the Junior Battle of Glory. Um, we have uh, Sushi um, uh, Oyagi taking on Naruki Doi. Now, Naruki Doi attacked uh, um, Oyagi before the start of the bell. So he was determined to win this match. I mean, <coughs> I can see why he wants to win the match. But, however, him trying to attack Oyagi was hardly enough to put him away. But it was Oyagi with a jackknife to put away, give him his two points so basically he is um this is his first two points so now we're still early in the stages so uh i will continue to follow this more now our next match is a um part of the real world tag league match uh we have this guy ikamen jiro or he goes by kudo shio tokyo japan but we call him ikamen regardless if he's no longer with wwe he teams up with um segio Tachibana, they take on the members of the Voodoo Murders, more specifically the Saito brothers, Jun and Ri. I thought this match was fun, um, of course, uh, with Ikeman doing his thing as always, having a bit of fun, but however, when it comes to the Voodoo with the Saito brothers, they don't play games. But in the end, it was, of course, um, with a full Nelson slam by um, Jun onto to Tachibana to pick up the win. So right now the side two brothers get two points in this tournament while the other team gets zero. Now we do get a tag match, not part of the tournament. We have Yuma Anzai teaming up with Yuki Honda. They take on Ryo Inoue and the legend of Ozamu um, Nishimuri. I thought that was pretty good. I mean, you do have a veteran involved in this match, but um, in the end, it was the final vent by Hana onto Inoue to pick up the win. Now, our next two matches are part of the Junior Battle of Glory. First one, we have Fuminor Abe taking on Dan Tamra. Uh, this match was pretty good. Um, very impressive. But, however, um, this one ended in a submission thanks to Fuminor Abe. It looks more like in uh, one of those moves that we've seen Zack Sabre Jr. does. However, um, the match was called thanks to the r- referee making the right one. So this match goes to re- um, Fuminori Abe with two points. As for Dan Tamara, zero. Next match, we have Hikaru Sato taking on Rising Hayato. I thought this match was going to be interesting. I mean, you got Hikaru Sato, who is an expert in grappling and, of course, striking, takes on a high-flying sensation like Rising Hayato. I mean, Hayato put everything on the line to try to take him out. But in the end, it was the springboard moonsault that ended for for him to defeat Sato and pick up his two points. So right now, he gets two points while Sato gets zero. Now, our next and final three matches are part of the Real World Tag League. Uh, team number one, we have Shu Ishikawa and Ren Ayabe. They take on... Ryan Davidson and Cyrus. Now, this is a very interesting match. Cyrus is a big dude. He's like a monster. I thought, I figured it was going to be a bit of the power advantage because Ishikawa was involved, but nope, that wasn't it. They managed to separate him away from Inab- Ayabe to pick up the win. I'm like, wow, that was impressive. Now, our next match. We have 
a very interesting dynamic here. Okuda Omori teaming up with our brand new um, Triple Crown champion, Katsuhiko Nakajima. They take on Suwama and Hiniteki Azuki now. Nobody gets along in this match. Like, Suwama doesn't trust Izuki. Nakajima acts like he runs the place. So that, that kind of goes out in its way. But I figured that somehow someone's going to break. But in the end, it was, of course, a really impressive submission by Omori onto Suwama the pick up the win. I, I would not have expected that from him, but it did. So, of course, uh, Omori and Nakajima, they get their first two points, while Suwama and Suzuki get zero. Now, our main event, we have Kento Kirahara and Yuma Oyagi, they take on members of the Bulk Orchestra, Galeno Del Man and Hayato Tamara. What a fantastic match. I mean, I think this is a pretty good one, especially for Galeno Del Mal, uh, who, well, bo both members of Bulk Orchestra has are from Gleet, but it was great. But in the end, it was a big lariat by Tamara onto Kento Kiyahara to pick up the win. So I'm really impressed by this league. I will continue to follow this along as much as possible. So I think that's pretty much it for what we have for All Japan. It's time for Pro Wrestling Noah. Okay. Our final review, Pro Wrestling Noah. This is just recently took place on a Monday, so it's called Monday Magic. This is episode three, so let's get started. Now, our newly crowned uh, GHC national champion, uh, Jack Morris, decided to find himself a number one contender. Well, he said that he set up a rumble match to determine who will be that guy, so we'll see where that goes. However, we start out the show with a very impressive exhibition match with some of the new people teaming up with the veterans. Um, Monobo Sayu, he teams up with a guy named Daisuke Nakamura. And then there's Keno, he, he teams up with Uruka uh, Sazaki. Uh, pretty good match, I have to say. Uh, don't know who these rookies are, but... I can tell by seeing that they are very impressive, especially with the fans who know who they are. And I think that's very important. And I think there was the one person who really caught my eye was Azaki. Um, but yeah, but however, the match ended in a time limit draw for 10 minutes and 10 seconds. So, yeah. Now we move on with the Rumble match for the number one contendership for the GHC National Championship. We have various wrestlers, like, of course, um, the former champion, um, Ego the Dr. Wagner Jr. Uh, we did have a few others involved. I'm trying to remember who else. Saxon Huxley, um, others. But in the end of this match, it was Hajime O'Hara who picked up the win. Now, of course, in the post-match, Jack Morrison said some words that he needed to say before their upcoming match. So we'll see where it takes us. Now, our next match, this one's a very interesting one. We have Asushi Kodoge. He teams up with wrestler who we've seen here in the States, Teriyaki. Uh, while Hayata, our, um, Hayata, he teams up with Tidex Alexander. Now, I was fully aware Alexander has been gone to, the, to Japan due to the Marvelous thing, but him showing up to Noah was pretty good. But I have to say he was very impressive. I think he might have put up a good impression and Noah, like any other foreign wrestler would do. And I thought the same thing with Teriyaki, but apparently there was a misfire with Teriyaki and uh, <clears throat> a sushi, but uh, with Kodage. But however, it was um, Tadex Alexander with a very impressive German suplex on Kodoge to pick up the win. I think it was pretty good. And I'm sure that really impressed the entire Noah fan base. Next up, we have the Yoshi wrestlers taking the stage. Uh, we have Yu teaming up with Hibiscus Me versus Miyuki Takase and Chihiro Hashimoto. Um, the last time um, Hibiscus and Yu teamed up, um, Hibiscus sacrificed herself for, for Yu because they were going to take wipe out an entire group 
well, that kind of scenario did played out. But however, um, I was impressed. I know that many people like to see more Yoshis in Noah. But however, in the end, it was, of course, um, Takaseo picked up the pin on Hibiscus to, to win. However, a very surprising person showed up at the post-match. And you guys may have seen her before with Pro Wrestling Wave. Uh, we're talking about Nagisa uh, Nozaki. Now, last time I heard she was injured and she was going to be out. She was. Uh, she's originally from Pro Wrestling Wave. But now I just found out that she is currently a freelancer. So she is no longer part of the promotion. However, I don't know what she said to Miyuki Takase. But I'm assuming that it has something to do with her now entering as a freelancer. I will do a discussion video one day involving about why is, uh, Japanese wrestlers prefer to be freelancers rather than be in exclusive contracts. So we'll see where it goes. Next match, we have our current um, GHC Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champions, Alpha Wolf, taking on his brother, um, Dragon Bane. This match was pretty good. I'm sure they wouldn't hold back. I know they determined to pick up a winner, but in the end, it was a double pinfall from both brothers to pick up the win. I thought it was very interesting. However, uh, their little celebration was cut short when um, Ninja Mac and Alejandro come out demanding that they should get another opportunity of the tag team titles, but it turns out they're not the only ones. So is Tad um, Tadasuke and Yohei from... Uh, GLG, they want a title shot too. But however, of course, the brothers Bane, Bra Dragon Bane, and Alpha Wolf are not going to ignore this. So they decided, let's turn this into a three way instead. So I think Noah's going to make that official. So we'll see what happens. Now, our next match, we have the members of GLG, good looking guys, LJ Clearing, Anthony Henry. I know Anthony Green and Jake Lee taking on um, Rohe Oiwa, Keito Ki uh, Kiyomiya, and of course, all the way from all Japan, y um, Yuma and Zai. I thought it was a fantastic match. I think I like this trio with Oiwa, Kiyomiya, and Anzai. Fantastic. But in the end, it was, of course, Kiyomiya with a pinfall onto Clary. Awesome match. I think that was a pretty good match that it needed. I think seeing... um. Of course, Anzai, um, Kiyomiya, and Oiwa, fantastic. So I think that's pretty much it right now. With all the reviews, I believe it's time for news updates. <laughs> Okay, so welcome to our news updates. So this is what we have for everybody. Now, as you know, I mentioned about the Evolution Girls, um, Chi Chi and Zones. Well, it just revealed now that on their next show, Evolution 8, that will take place on the 16th of November, Chi Chi will take on the the Hiroshima Ghost of Death match, Risa Sara. This is going to be a very interesting match because... Chi Chi will be facing against someone who is a bit more violent and way more dangerous than any other wrestler. I am just hope she is fully prepared what she's getting herself into. Now, um, another match has been added by Wrestling Revolver for the free season finale that will take place on the 2nd of December. It's going to be a no disqualification grudge match. We have Sammy Callahan teaming up with Jessica to take on JT Dunn and Ali Catch of the Unit. Now, these two teams hate each other completely. So, that's going to be a fantastic match. Um, it was announced by MLW for their Fightland show. Veda Scott has been announced to be part of the journalism team for that particular day. I'm not sure if she will be part of the entire promotion. That is still unhurt, uh, still unclear for me. But hopefully, there will be more answers coming up soon. Uh, Tokyo Show Pro Wrestling and Prestige Wrestling continue to announce more things happening for their upcoming event on December 4th for Combat Princess. They announced that Miyu Momono will be facing off, you know, Miyu Wananabe will be taking on um, Haiyan. So I'm kind of curious how Miyu Wananabe will take on Haiyan. Um, 
it's been a while since we've been hearing this. Uh, we were supposed to have this particular show a few months ago by Sari, or should I say Sare. Uh, Sariism Chapter 3 was supposed to take place. Now it's been announced. It's going to be happening on the 16th of January of 2024. Uh, Sari will be taking her revenge on everything that's going on. Uh, it was announced later that uh, she'll be facing Hashimoto on this particular day. Uh, to, uh, basically a rematch from the first one. Um, it, uh, yeah, it's going to be in Shinjuku face in case anybody asks. Now, Ice Ribbon has announced for the Yokohama event that will take place on the 23rd of November. Their card has been revealing. Uh, this is what they have. Yuko Sakurai will be facing against Arisa Shinose. I don't know who she is. Then there's Rina Amikura taking on Saran. Th match number three, Amisa Midon and Zones versus Mifu Ashida and uh, Asuka Fujitaki. Uh, match number four, Amchen versus Tsukina Umino. And then finally, we have our last match, Ibuki Hoshi, Totoro Satsuki, and Yappy. They take on Mokoto. Hamuko Oshi and Kaho Matsushita. So that's the card for that particular day. Hopefully I get to see it, but if not, then I apologize. Uh, GCW has announced two things that are taking place for this year. First is going to be the WrestleCade on the 24th of this month. Mads Warner will be facing off against the bad boy, Joy Janela. And then, of course, it was announced for their Aftermath show that will take place on December 31st. Risa Sarah will be uh, participating and taking on against Charlie Evans. I think that's going to be one killer match. Now, finally, our last review, Chaos has announced, as you know, for the roster of 2024 in their promotion. They announced a couple of names, even if you've never heard of them. I decided to announce them if you are Lucha Libre fans or if I have any subscribers coming from Mexico who are big fans of Lucha Libre. We have Fresero Jr., Larry... Miranda Jr. and Estrellita Laguenia. I think that's her name. But yeah, so those are the, that's pretty much what we have for our updates. So let's just uh, call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode. Coming up, as you know, we have Tuesday Wrestling. We're probably going to feature NWA Power and NXT. Now, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to have another review before that. Uh, just recently found out that there wasn't a recent Oz Academy event that took place. Um, if I have any fans who are interested in Oz Academy, I will definitely try. But if not, I apologize. I'll do that on Wednesday. But uh, we'll see how this one rolls up. Uh, but for now, I will see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.